This is the audio version of the 10-1 ELA tutorial reading comprehension practice booklet. It is for the section titled Battle for Your Brain. It is the full reading and a pause followed by the questions. Um, good luck. From Battle for Your Brain. Beavis and Butthead are two animated miscreants whose adventures at the low end of the food chain are currently the most popular program on MTV. Caught in the ungainly nadir, note, nadir means lowest point, of adolescence, they are not nice boys. They torture animals, they harass girls, and sniff paint thinner. They like to burn things. They have a really insidious laugh. Ha ha, ha ha. They are the spiritual descendants of the semi-sentient. Note, semi-sentient means only partially aware or conscious. Teens from Wayne's World and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Only dumber and meaner. The downward spiral of live, the living white male surely ends here, in a pimple named Butthead, whose idea of an idea is, Hey Beavis, let's go over to Stuart's house and light one in his cat's butt. For a generation reminded hourly of its diminished prospects, these losers have proven remarkably embraceable. Why do I like Beavis and Butthead? asks Warren Lutz, 26, a journalism major at San Francisco State. You're asking me to think, dude. Created by beginner animator Mike Judge, 30, for a festival of sick and twisted cartoons last year, Beavis and Butthead have become a trash phenomenon. T-shirts, hats, key rings, masks, buttons, calendars, dolls are all working their way to malls. A book, a comic book, a movie, a CD, and a Christmas special are in the works. David Letterman drops a Beavis and Butthead joke almost nightly. Later this fall, the pair will become a semi-regular feature on his program. Beavis and Butthead are clearly the new morons in town. They are also part of a much wider TV phenomenon, one that drives not just stupid laughs, but the front page battle now being waged for control of Paramount Pictures. It is the battle to play Roadhog on the information highway. As cable technologies continue to expand our range of viewing options, the old boundaries of propriety and decency no longer apply. Beavis and Butthead join a growing crowd of characters who have found a magic formula. Nothing cuts through the clutter like a slap of bracing crudity. Nothing stops a channel surfer like the word sucks. Stupidity, served with a knowing intelligence, has become the next best thing to smarts. Letterman's signature, stupid pet tricks bit, now 11 years running, introduced a new voice to television. Ironic, self-aware, profoundly interested in the ingrained dumbness of the tube. Instead of dumbing down, it made smart comedy out of the process of dumbing down, and it clicked. Barry Diller successfully built Fox into the fourth network on a shockingly lumpen, note lumpen from lumpen proletariat, according to Karl Marx, that part of the working class unable to be improved by revolution, uh, on a shockingly lumpen cartoon family, The Simpsons, and an even more lumpen real one, The Bundys of Married with Children, Nickelodeon's cartoon, The Wren and Stimpy Show, the highest rated original series on cable, follows the scatological, note scatological means having a preoccupation with bodily excrement, uh, follows the scatological adventures of a chihuahua and a cat, sometimes not getting much farther than the litter box. The network's new contender, Rocco's Modern World, wallows down a similarly inspired low road. Its first episode, in which a home shopping channel called Lobot O-Shop pitched items like tapeworm farms for kids, beat Rem and Stimpy in the ratings. There's a purity to this kind of ignorance, says Beavid and Butthead writer Davis Felton, 
at 53 MTV's oldest staff member. Going back to the basic point where thinking begins and staying there. But they are not just any losers, this lineage of losers. They are specifically our losers. Totems of an age of decline and non-achievement. One in five people who graduated from college between 1984 and 1990 holds a job that doesn't require a college education. If this is not sorry, if this is not hard economic reality for a whole generation, it is psychological reality. Loser television has the sense to play along. It taps the anxiety in the culture and plays it back for laughs. Homer Simpson works in a nuclear power plant. Al Bundy sells shoes. Beavis and Butthead work at Burger World and can't even visualize the good life. In one episode, as an act of community service, they get jobs at a hospital. Sucking on IV bags, planning to steal a cardiac patient's motorized cart, they agree. It doesn't get any better than this, dude. The shows also share a common language. When Beavis and Butthead producer John Andrews, 39, needed to put together a writing staff, he first called Letterman head writer Rob Burnett for suggestions. Most of this stuff is done by over-educated guys who grew up reading Mad Magazine, National Lampoon, and watching Animal House on Saturday Night Live, says Matt Groening, creator of The Simpsons. Scripts are based on what comes out of the collective memory of the writers, which is mostly memories of sitting in front of a TV set growing up. More than just throwbacks to the intelligently dumb television of the Three Stooges and Ernie Kovacs, the current shows are broad immersions in pop culture, satirical and multi-tiered. They address an audience that can view reruns of Gilligan's Island and I Dream of Jeannie, half as camp, note, camp means mediocrity so extreme as to have a perverse appeal, perverse appeal. Uh, half as camp, half as the fabric of shared experience. The smarter you are, the more you see single events on different levels simultaneously, says Fernanda Moore, 25, who likes The Simpsons, Ren and Stimpy, and Beavis and Butthead. A doctoral candidate at Stanford, Moore is the daughter we all crave and perhaps fear. Dumb people I know, she says, aren't self-referential. Of course, this is only one way to watch the shows. Lars Ulrich, drummer in the band Metallica, was delighted one day to spot Beavis wearing a Metallica t-shirt. Yet he was also alarmed. I would have to say, as little as I want to say it, that I think there are people like that. I'm not sure dumb is the right word. I would go more in the direction of the word ignorant. Either way, as the channels open up, the ship of fools is now sailing at full capacity. Written by John Leland, an American journalist. So that was the full reading portion. I am going to start reading the questions associated with the reading. Um, I would suggest that if you are going to listen to me read the questions, that you pause after each question to contemplate and come up with an answer. Uh, don't try to rush along with it. Okay. So, starting with question number 28. In lines, tw sorry. In lines 1 to 23, the combined effect of words such as miscreants and semi-sentient and phrases such as low end of the food chain is to imply that Beavis and Butthead are A. Spoiled B. Amusing C. Intelligent D. Unwholesome Question 29. The battle to play Roadhog on the information highway, lines 53 to 54, refers to the struggle for A. Dominance of the electronic media B. Superior knowledge of technology C. Increasingly high profit margins D. Easy access to information Question 30. In context, the word propriety, line 57, means A. Correctness of behavior B. Originality of material C. Exciting entertainment D. Artistic integrity Question 31. In the context of lines 58 to 64, the use of the word clutter, line 62, suggests that the writer believes most television programs to be A. Meaningful in outlook B entertaining for their viewers, C, inconsistent in their approach, D, indistinguishable from, one, from each other. 
Question 32. That the network's new contender, Rocco's Modern World, wallows down a similarly inspired low road, lines 88 to 90, indicates the programs A. Inconsistent quality B. Questionable taste C. Technical excellence D. Innovative accomplishments Question 33. In context, the word totems Line 104 means A. Enemies B. Destroyers C. Customers D. Representatives Question 34. Despite his initial delight, Lars Ulrich is also alarmed to see Beavis wearing a Metallica t-shirt. Line, lines 168 to 174 because he realizes that A. Metallica record sales may decline B. Beavis reflects an element of present-day reality. C. Beavis should not be considered a fan of, hard, of rock music. D. Metallica t-shirts look ridiculous on a cartoon character. Question 35. The statement, The ship of fools is now sailing at full capacity, lines 176 to 177, means that A. Cable TV is reaping high profits. B. Loser TV is firmly established. C. TV audiences crave entertainment. D. TV wow. networks are highly competitive. I don't know if you could hear that yelling. Um, sorry. Question 36. The phrase from the excerpt that illustrates a contradiction of terms is... A. Ingrained dumbness, line one, sorry, line 72. B. Overeducated guys, line 134. C. Intelligently dumb, line 145. D. Shared experience, line 153. And that is the end of the question component. Hello?